The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, your Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in sun and moon and stars, and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves. People fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life. And that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell in the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord. When I fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Whereas we heard this morning from prophet Jeremiah chapter 33, 14 to 16. In the first reading of today, the Lord speaking through prophet Jeremiah says, I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Judah and the house of David. The questions will be, what promise was that? Was the promise eventually fulfilled? If yes, how was it fulfilled? And when was it fulfilled? The Bible is rightly called the Word of God because it contains divine revelations, divine messages, exhortations, and also instructions. The Bible can also be called a book of promise, because therein we have numerous promises which God made to us, his children. So today, within the context of today's worship, let us talk about God's promises to us. The first reading of today talks about the promise of restoration, which God made to the people of Israel, the house of Judah, the house of David, when they came back from exile. When they returned from that exact experience, they discovered that their, their houses, their property, everything they had, we are destroyed. So in their pains and frustration, they wondered why God abandoned them. They wondered why God had not fulfilled the promise he made to their forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So in his response, God reassured them that he will still fulfill the promise he made to the house of Judah, the house of David. And that's the response we read today from the, first, from the book of Jeremiah, the first reading of today. Continuing, God told them that when the time comes, he will send someone, a righteous branch from the house of David, who will come to fix to revive, to reestablish, and save the house of David and house of Judah. Was this promise eventually fulfilled? Absolutely, yes. How? At his own time, God fulfilled this promise by sending his son, Jesus Christ, from the house of David, who came 
and revived, reestablished, and saved not just the house of Israel and Judah, but also the entire humanity. But we must know that when God made the promise to people of Israel through Jeremiah, the promise was not fulfilled immediately. The people had to wait. Usually, it is difficult to wait for God to fulfill his promise. Why? Because of two major reasons. Number one, when God makes promises to us, he doesn't usually disclose to us the content, especially the details of his fulfillment. He doesn't usually tell us how the promise will be fulfilled and when the promise will be fulfilled. These promises he kept to himself or he keeps to himself. So when he made that promise to the people of Israel to Jeremiah, he didn't disclose in details when the promise will be fulfilled and how the promise will be fulfilled. He just said, in those days, that is when the time comes, what time? He didn't say. So because the details we are not given, the people we are, we are waiting because they don't know how and when the promise will be fulfilled. So from the historical record, the people waited for 600 years before this promise was fulfilled. I'm sure you will think it was ridiculous. And I can believe that people who heard that promise at the first instance weren't alive when it was fulfilled eventually. But their families, their generations, their successive generations enjoyed the fruits of the promise when it came alive. So the big question is, God makes promises to us. Are you ready to wait? Am I ready to wait? Or are we impatient, trying to jump the gun? Or looking for an alternative because we can't wait for him to fulfill his promise at his own timing. He says to us, a thousand years is like a day for me. So he's not, he's not bound by our timetable. So the people of Israel waited until the promise became a reality. Are you ready to wait for him to fulfill the promise he made to you? That is the first question. The second challenge is, when God makes promises to us, it is difficult to manage to wait for this fulfillment because we don't actually understand how God operates. His modus operandi is not clear to us. We cannot actually say with certainty that we know how God behaves, that we know his character. When you know someone's character very well, when you know someone's behavior very well, when you understand how a person operates, it will be easier for you, therefore, to wait for that person until he fulfills the promise he made to you. For example, if I promise you that I'm going to visit your house, and you are waiting for me to fulfill that promise, and a friend, your friend, says to you, we have waited enough for this guy, Father Nathaniel. He was to be here three hours ago, and he has not shown up. He's not even taking his call. So how are you sure he's going to come? But because you know me very well, because you know how I operate, because you know my behavior, you can confidently tell your friend, Father Nathaniel, surely he will come. Don't worry, he will come. I know him very well. He will show up. Within this context, you are not ready to give in to doubt because you know the character or the person you are waiting for to fulfill the promise he made to you. When God made the promise to the people of Israel, they understood how God operates. They understood his character. So they were waiting for him to do his things according to his plan. Can we be in that situation where we can actually say, although it has taken ages to come about, but I'm still waiting because I know he will come. I know the promise will be fulfilled. Dear friends, for God's promises to become realities, we have to wait 
And we have to trust his character. And for us waiters, therefore, we must exercise patience, hope, and endurance. God has made a lot of promises to us as a family. And he has also made promises to us as individuals. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to give you a new life. I'm going to give you a better job. I'm going to give you a better accommodation. These are his promises. When are they going to be fulfilled? I don't know. How are they going to be fulfilled? I don't know. He doesn't disclose the when and the how. He keeps these to himself. The question is, are you ready to wait? Are you ready to trust in his character, knowing that at his own timing, he can do this? And that is what happens. But when we Christians commemorate how our forefathers waited for the Lord to fulfill that one promise he made to them that he's going to give them a savior. So the period of Advent for us, 40 days, that is more or less, uh, four weeks, sorry, we are going to wait because we want to celebrate the waiting of our fathers who trusted, who waited, and who also knew that at his own timing, the Savior promise will come. For the promises of God, as your priest, I'm, I talk from experience, and also from my little knowledge of him, that whatever promise he has made to you, whatever you are hoping to be fulfilled in your life, whatever you are looking up to God to happen in your life, I'm here to tell you that those promises, I don't know when they will come about. I don't know. I don't even know how he's going to fulfill them. But I can beat my chest to tell you that he will definitely do it. But when? I don't know. How? I don't know. Remember, the people of Israel waited because they understood his character. And eventually, the Savior was given to them. My prayer is simple, that as we commemorate that first long waiting our fathers exhibited or demonstrated that this Advent is a season of Lent, we teach us how to wait for the Lord. How to wait for him to do his things according to his program. He says to us, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. All you need to do is keep waiting, keep believing, and trusting his character that he's going to do what he said he's going to do. But when and how, your priest, unfortunately, does not know.